This is a 7.8 inch 2U screen for a mini rack. And my mini rack has some Raspberry Pis in it, the screen, a network switch with power over ethernet, and two mini ITX PCs down here. I don't have everything set up perfectly yet, but I can remote control anything in my studio from this screen using Home Assistant. And I'm not gonna go fully into the details on how I have Home Assistant set up. This is a dashboard for Home Assistant that gives me control over everything. And uh, you know, I can turn on and off lights throughout my studio. I can see the CO2 levels and temperatures using air gradient. I can control my HVAC and see my security system and door statuses and things. Uh, I have this set up using a, a setup called Pi Kiosk that I went into for the Pi Touch display. And I'll link to that video in the description. Uh, but this is connected to this middle Raspberry Pi here that's controlling this touch screen. And I'll show you how I have this plugged in. This is the back of the touch screen and it just has a USB-C connection up there that does uh, power and data. So you connect that to the USB port on the Pi. And there's an HDMI port that gives the video signal from the Pi. And there's a little button back here for the OSD menu on the screen. I haven't had to change any settings. And there's a headphone jack and I think there's even built-in speakers. I haven't tested those yet. Maybe we can game a little bit and see how those work. This thing came with its own HDMI cable and a USB A to C adapter, and that's the one that I'm using here to plug into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I can reroute these cables a little bit better later. I was just setting this up this morning, but I did have to change one setting on the Raspberry Pi because I'm using power over ethernet and not a Raspberry Pi USB-C power supply. I had to tell the Pi in the Raspi config to uh, turn off the USB current limit. Otherwise, uh, this port is limited to like 600 milliamps, which isn't enough to run the screen. Now, DeskPi sent this to me. They, I think this is on pre-sale right now. I'm not sure if it's actually available for sale yet, but it should be, I think, $100 for the screen, which isn't a bad price for a decent little touch display like this, especially for something very customized. There are other options. I, I will link you to an issue in the mini rack repo where people are showing their other options for little screens that you can integrate into here. There's even a screen that fits right here from Waveshare that you can plug into a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I'll get to this in a second, but uh, DeskPi also sent me, they make a 2U drawer for mini racks, lockable. So it has a lock on it and it has uh, cable pass-throughs in the back. So you can put, put items in here that you wanna have more secure. Crazy, I mean, since I've started talking about these mini racks, I found out people are deploying these things all over the place. So if you need a more secure installation or if you just want more storage for your mini rack and you don't want to 3D print your own drawer, there's an option for you now. Uh, but anyway, back to here. This is not an Apple Watch, despite what it looks like. <laughs> this, this is an Apple Watch. That is called the Jet KVM. I have a video going over the Jet KVM. I'm not gonna talk about it here. Right now it's connected to this first Raspberry Pi for remote control, but eventually I'm going to connect it to one of these two PCs on the bottom. Uh, that is something that I've been working on for a future video. We'll get there at some point, but right now it's just connected to this Pi. I can also use Pi Connect or VNC or whatever to remote control these things, and I use SSH to manage them. Uh, but that is what that is. Everybody always asks, what is that thing? Now, every time I show something like this, everybody's asking, how do you have your home assistant set up? And like I said, I have another video on that that I'll link to in the description. Uh, but this home assistant is not actually running on here right now. In fact, I have over here a 3D printed home assistant yellow mount that I might put into this rack or another rack eventually when I get it wrapped into here. But right now, my home assistant is actually back here in the network closet. Uh, it is up there right now. So there's my Home Assistant yellow. Uh, that's what's actually running Home Assistant. And when I walked in, you saw that the lights turned on automatically. That's because I have one of these everything presence sensors here that detected me using radar that triggered Home Assistant to turn on the automation to turn on these lights. And there's a bunch of those kind of things running here. The nice thing is it's all private and local. There is no smart home cloud integration junk. It's all running on that box and I can control it from anywhere, from my phone, from that uh, touch screen, from my computer, whatever I want. And uh, even if the internet's down, I can still have full remote access. One really quick, I noticed uh, I, I also have this DeskPi TT. This is a 3U mini rack, but if you turn it on its side, this is actually an early prototype I was testing. Uh, if you turn it on its side, it actually lets you do, I think five or six U in like a six inch rack. So you could put little Mac minis or 
a single SBC on each, each rack level. Uh, but this thing I think is also on pre-sale right now. They sent me a couple of these to test and I gave them some feedback and now there's a final version that I think is gonna start shipping soon. So I don't know if I'll do any special video on that, but I've been testing my uh, time pie here and it's out of here because I keep having to mess with settings on the hardware hat for GPS and all that. I'll, I'll get to that in a future video, don't worry. And I know you're gonna ask, can you game on this? And the answer to that is surprisingly, yes. Uh, if your game supports such a wide aspect ratio, this is like very cinematic, uh, but I found out that even though it says it doesn't run, uh, Super Tux Cart runs on here too. This screen is going to cost like a hundred bucks, I think, once it's for sale. Uh, I think right now it's still on pre-order, but it should be it should be coming pretty soon. I know they started shipping these things out, and uh, I'll put a link to it in the description. And I don't know if that's the final link, so you know check the description for the latest link and pricing and all that kind of stuff. This overall rack is still kind of in progress. I I don't know yet if I'm going to go with the T1 or this is the T2. It's actually a taller mini rack. Uh, the only reason I'd go with this over that is. I would have a little more room for expansion in the future. With the uh, T1, you can see it's already getting pretty full with, with the kind of things that I want to put in it. So the T2 gives me that vertical height uh, while still being a small footprint. The other nice thing is this is, uh, I don't know how many inches that is or how many millimeters, but this is more of those inches or millimeters in the depth. So it, it gives you a little bit more room to play with front to back. Anyway, I will continue going down my rabbit hole of uh, mini racks and DeskPy keeps nerd sniping me by sending me these awesome new bits of mini rack tech. And the uh, HVAC system just turned on and you can probably hear that. So I think that's a good sign to wrap up this video. Leave questions in the comments for anything else you saw that I did not explain and I will talk to you again soon.